Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Morgus Camano. Uh, I'm a 203K consultant. Uh, my specialty is really the construction aspect of things. Um, and let's start. So just a brief introduction. Uh, I've been in construction for over 20 years. Um, Red Bull Stadium, Jets training facility, high rises, hotels, et cetera. Uh, now I'm actually a graduate professor in engineering and construction. I'm uh, also the director of design and construction at an institute. Um, licenses, obviously, made like Keller Williams agent. Um, I also have a home improvement license and a license 203K. Um, there's only about 40 of us in the state, um, and there's only about three ways to become a consultant. So it's it, it's pretty special. Uh, today's agenda is it's going to be really basic. It's going to be the, more or less the do's and don'ts. And what what I <laughs> excuse me, uh, what I call elevating inventory through renovations. Uh, it's really the approach on how you look at what's on the market and what your client wants. Everyone wants that moving ready house, but not everyone is always qualified for it financially or it's out of their price range. So it's just about using what's on the market to your advantage. Um, we're also going to talk about what properties are eligible and not eligible. It's not just a primary single family residence. I'm going to go into some of the other um, areas. Uh, what is the construction process through a 203K loan? And what are eligible construction costs? The do, and the, the do's and the don'ts associated with that. So you could set the expectation when you're going to a house that is 65, 75, maybe even $100,000 under what their budget is. And then you can make it that um, after the ARB has been calculated. So what does it mean to elevate your real estate? Um, you're really unlocking the property's full potential, you know, highest and best use. That's something that we always talk about. Uh, you're increasing long-term equity. Uh, most people's retirement plan is the equity that they've built in their homes. Um, and then they get the empty nest, they roll down, but they, you're building that long-term wealth. Uh, you can also deliver a gratification uh, of an accomplishment by doing this. Uh, you're, you're able to create something that you've only dreamed about, not necessarily just finding it and buying it, but physically making it your own. And again, getting the lifestyle uh, that you've dreamed of. It's, it's really, uh, I don't want to be repetitious when I say it, but everyone always has visions in mind and, and this allows you to get a little creative with the design and, and construction of the home. And if anyone's got children, you like to you know, build memories, for you and your partner, you and your children, whatever it may be. If there's any questions, just please stop me. So this is the mortgage limits and I just concentrated in this area and then I wanted to show you what the other part of the state looked like. So right now, through a 203K loan, HUD is allowing up to almost a little over $1.1 million in a renovation loan. Again, this is all based on qualifications, financial assessment, your credit score, um, regular approval process, essentially. Um, and it's not just for single homes. You know, we're going to go into detail about two families, three families, and uh, four families. But you can see as you start getting, um, when you go into more of an investment side, even though it's not commercial, um, how it, how it doubles and having access to this amount of money in this area is it's it's very interesting and it's very. Uh, because when people think of these loans, they think, oh, I just want to redo a kitchen or I just want to do a bathroom. No, you can literally build yourself a million dollar mansion. Um, and again, there's also 
acquisition costs of the actual property or refinance, but that's that's a completely different subject. Uh, which, if you have any questions afterwards, I can get and get caught up with that. Um, you can see down in Cape May and Cumberland counties, um, they're only about a half a million, give or take, and then they go up to about a million. Um, and if there's any properties that you're looking at in other counties, um, you can definitely yeah, yeah we can look at that right yeah it's not a problem yeah I have all the uh, the websites if anyone actually needs them but it's that's more I don't want to see your thunder either <laughs> so eligible homes um, you're using a two or three call two or three k loan to finance the rehabilitation it could be one to four units including townhouses and a modular home. You're allowed to do condominiums, obviously interior improvements only, because when you buy the condo, you're really buying the interior space. All the communal space, uh, roofs, exteriors are all done uh, by the uh, homeowner association. See, and now this is interesting because mixed use residential properties that have a commercial space, a lot of people don't know, didn't know that you can only, they, again, they think that you can only do a one family house, but if people are looking to then rent, or, or rent out their homes, you can buy that, you know, two, three, four family, just live in the unit and then you rent the other out. Again, personal choice, but the options are available. And especially with a commercial space. Now this loan does not allow you to renovate the commercial space, but it allows you to purchase it. as uh, So you get that additional income too, which is nice. Um, and a lot of people, Aren't aware of it, but you can actually, if the zoning, you know, the, that's a whole nother course, zoning laws and regulations and, and the variance process. But if you wanted to or are able to, you could convert your one unit to a two, three, or four family. Again, it's really based on the municipality, what the area is zoned for. Like take North Arlington, for example, they no longer allow any two families to be built. They only want single families. They have an opportunity zone along Ridge Road, but that's about it. Um, Linder started to do the same thing too. But again, you have to check with your local construction official before, which is part of the due diligence process that either I can help you with as the as the expert, or you could go to uh, township and actually ask the construction official. A lot of this is posted on their website too. But if you have any uh, specific questions, feel free to contact me. Are there any questions? No, we're good. Thank you. Um, so this is really the process. It's it's sounds very simple, and it, it can be like the regular transaction can be very simple. It can be very difficult. It's all about who your players are and the team that you're working with. So if you're not able to clearly communicate, set expectations, and hit those deliverables, no one's going to close on the deal. So obviously you go through Carnegie, excuse me, Carnegie Mortgage, um, get your pre-approval like everything else. Um, then you want to submit your offer and secure it. Okay. Uh, the question about um, the interest rate. So when you get the interest rate to, to purchase the home, uh, that's going to be the same interest rate for the renovation part? Like how that? Yes, I don't know. Yeah, so that's your interest rate. So we lock in the construction loan rate, loan style, or 203K. Um, it's usually a couple ticks higher than what the normal conventional rate would be. And then you can refinance after six months after into a normal performing rate. Um, that's, six yeah, months. after six months. So that's what usually is it usually takes if you're doing a big job, it usually takes three to six months anyway. Yeah, at least. least. So once you complete the home, then you can refinance if it takes six months after. Yeah, so you go through the construction. I don't want to, um, it, you know, it's it's you're lumping in the construction aspect and the home purchase, the acquisition itself. So your your homeowner is not dealing with multiple payments. They're not even paying the contractor, uh, which is essentially why I have this position. Um, you know, and I'm kind of going off a tangent, but that that's fine. But they could finance a whole bunch of things, and I'm going to go into a slide about that where they can finance within it. It has its limits, obviously, because it's all government related. Well, most of it is the, the FHA loans are, are government regulated. The home style and private mortgages, they have their own set of uh, nuances, I'll call them, 
requirements, but you really want to make sure that you're, you're under contract. Don't engage contractors, don't engage me before, because it's gonna waste time for everybody. It's gonna delay the process. You know, I'm, I'm as being in the construction industry, you know, some of the unions guys, they get $1,200 a day. And if you don't streamline things, you're going to be sitting around just paying and paying and paying. And, you know, when, I, when I'm teaching at, at Stevens, uh, I, tell, I tell my students the same thing. You know, it's always A to B. Just don't make waves along the way because it's just going to take you longer to get there. Longer to get there, more frustration from the, uh, you know, the potential buyers, more frustration for, for us. So, you know, I try to advise everyone because my name is listed on a government website. When a mortgage company says, here, you need a HUD consultant, there's 44 of us in the state, you put, you figure out where you want to go. And the first thing is, boom, hey, I need help. Well, do you have an offer that's accepted? No. Okay, well, once you do, let me come out there. And, and it's not it's not because of anything. But, you know, uh, you, you really just want to make sure that this is their house before you start spending money. Um, so... You want to contact me once the offer is accepted. Please. So a lot of times these buyers, they, they want to know what to expect as far as expense for the construction. Correct. So without having that um, consultation in advance, how would they know what to, what to submit as an offer? Because sometimes that's directly related to their offer. Correct. So a lot of times... Everyone's got a friend that construction. If they're really set on doing that, they should bring a contractor with them, a, a contractor that's close to them, who's going to be able to help them and guide them along. You know, typically, I'm required to provide a proposal and pricing, but you know, if I do ten kitchens a year, my cabinet and, and granite guys going to give me a lot of a discount. You know, because it's, it's just you're doing repetition, right? Or if you have a seller and he gave you the whole building, you're going to lower your, your commission rate. So everyone's got different prices. Everyone's got, everyone wants to work for a dollar or $10. So I try to give a generalization of what things should cost based on best practice. Now the contractor who's doing the work or a contractor should be able to lock it in with, with the homeowner at that point, or at least give them an idea. And if they need help with contractors, I'm working with 18 of them right now. They're familiar with the process. They go through it, but typically what also uh, what you can do is um, the mortgage company is going to be able to tell you, you know, acquisition is here. The max they're approved is here. That's how much you have for construction. So you're taking that analysis and say, okay, well, let's do 30,000 a kitchen, 15,000 a bath. Uh, you want to do the floors. You want to do this. You want to move a beam, whatever it may be. And you get a general idea of that. As long as the home after construction looks like the higher home, higher priced homes in the area, then you know it's going to be for a trace. Yeah, and from the lending side, we can lend up to ninety five percent of the appraised value. So after what, so you get a contractor, they draw blueprints, they get the whole nine, get an architect in. So if they say the house is going to be worth eight hundred thousand, we can lend up to ninety five percent of that, or what what they qualify for. Yeah, no, it's an excellent point. Um, and if, if I always make references, I'll give you five people. You can call them all. I have no best interest on uh, when I deal with them. It's just I, I even make the recommendation because they know the process. When they know the 203K process, because you know, this process is about progress. The payment form, uh, format, rather, is about progress. Most contractors want 30 40% on front. This program does not allow that. You got to do work, then you get paid. You do work, and then you get paid. So working with people who have the pocket or the credit to do that with suppliers and subcontractors, they're the more successful ones because you're only allowed five different inspections in order to do this. And I go through all of this. Don't I know I'm throwing a lot at everyone. Don't get intimidated. I go through a pickoff meeting, like we call it in the industry to go over all of this stuff with the homeowner. So you're really detached from the process. But right now you're just going in to say, you know, their price point's 500,000. Why aren't we looking at homes that are 300? 
Oh, they need so much work. So this is the perfect, this is the perfect scenario. You know, and again, it's it's not just going between 450 and 550. If their price point is 500, thinking you're either going to knock them down or they can put their own money into it. But to physically do the construction prior to moving into the home is really what they're looking for. Because they're looking for a move-in ready home. But now you're buying it at a lower um, on the lower end of the acquisition scale, but then you're putting in value. You're automatically increasing the value of the home and the equity, obviously. Um, so again, this is a general in the in the um, if they're qualified for 500, the loan is 400, they have a hundred thousand for construction. Now, what does a hundred thousand dollars get you? It all depends. Um, I did a I did a kitchen for a uh, really, really high profile divorce attorney. And she wanted an onyx. I don't know if anyone's actually seen an onyx countertop, but it's translucent. It's white, got a little black vein. Black onyx is completely different than the white onyx. Plus three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't have that problem. I'm going to go with quartz or you know, a nice grant or whatever. But you, you sell that idea to the homeowner of making it their own, picking out the finishes, picking out the styles and really, and, and even moving the walls around and making it an open floor plan. So you could, you know, watch TV from the living room while you're cooking or have that wrap around island with the bar on it. There's a lot of different things. So it, it takes the creativity of, of the agents in order to really push this. And that's what this is really about, this class now. It's not about, it's about explaining the do's and don'ts, but it's also your delivery and your approach because how many how many houses are on the market these days? Inventory is still low, and the prices aren't coming down. There's still you know there's still offers going in. I was with a builder in up in Bergen County, with three hundred forty thousand dollars over asking. It was a knockdown. It's a you know it's in Franklin Lakes. It's going to be a two million dollar home, but to think that it was three hundred and some thousand dollars over asking is insane. But there were builders. Uh, that were there, but here, you know, you're not going to be competing because not everyone's going to have the same mindset. <laughs> That's what this is about: it's the mindset, the approach, and everyone's ability to deliver. Uh, and again, this is still a generalization of how how this loan process can work. Um, I would come in legally. I'm obligated to write the scope of work. Um, obviously, I would talk to the homeowner. Yes, we want to do the kitchen. What does that entail? We're going to do paint, what does that entail, et cetera. And then I put an estimate together. Uh, from there, the, and I did it this way because my, if anyone who knows this process is going to ask for my report. Anyone who knows the process is going to ask for my report because that's their, because they're going to be obligated to sign it as part of their contract with the bank to do the law. So they always want to see what they're getting into before, but you're, you're going to have a regular homeowner contract, but the bank is going to require, the lender, excuse me, is going to require that they sign off on my list of, of things because you might not have fire or you might have asbestos, or you might have um, something that is mandatory that needs to get fixed, but you necessarily don't want it. You know, as a homeowner, you don't want it. You want to ignore it. So I'm obligated to bring that up um, or make the suggestion or the recommendation a lot of times. Some houses, the basements are filled with mold. That's, that's something I just walk away from. There's an environmental issue. So you guys are going to have to, um, the, the homeowners are going to have to address that. How they address that is up there. Like make recommendations on different environmental companies like Rita in our office has an environmental company. She heard, used our service before and it was just X, the great experience. Um, so once they review the proposal, uh, receive the proposal from the contractor, you then do the home appraisal to see if the ARV that we both came up with is the same as the appraiser. And then once we get that back, we close and commence with the uh, renovation. Again, a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different personalities. You're gonna to have to tailor this schedule, but this is probably, these two steps can be, um, can be switched or can be worked with. And again, I've been in the contracting world for over 20 years, you know, delivering um, 
a, a fruitful conversation is really what's needed a lot of times. And unless you're, you know, it, it's hard to understand what people think unless you're in that business. So that connection right there usually smooths things out and, and uh, goes a long way. So as, as part of the financing, you're allowed to carry these, what we call salt costs or indirect costs. Um, sometimes an engineer or an architect is needed. If you decided that you wanted to take down uh, walls, um, you know, as an engineer myself, I'm able to determine whether it's load bearing or not, or some contractors can give their opinion. But at the same time, the township is gonna require that you get building uh, drawings done, construction drawings done. And I have a whole range of architects and engineers that I work with. You can also use um, like uh, Thumbtack or Angie's List. There, there's a lot. Hey, yeah. I knew how information and I want to learn it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, when you you want to renovation some, you have uh, your contractors or you can say whatever. You can, any contractor is qualified. So okay. there is no qualification other than the local state qualification, which is to have a home, and, home improver improvement contractor's license. HIC. Yeah. If they have that, they can do this. It's not like anyone that I recommend is approved. These are just people that I've worked with. I can say that their work was good and I can say that the work was timely. I make no guarantee. I really don't like to offer even to my own family, to be quite honest. I don't like making recommendations, but I do it because it, it benefits everyone. And I, you know, I don't know what the price is. I don't know what the value is. Everyone, the contracts between the homeowner and the general contractor. Okay. Okay. Are the HUD consultant fees regulated or standard? They're standard across the board. You can go under them. Um, so that's all published online too. Um, depending, it, it's a sliding scale on the initial inspection. Initial inspection can be anywhere uh, from Five hundred dollars to a thousand can exceed a thousand. Inspections are are three fifty, and any type of change order is a hundred dollars. Uh, but you can you can get that money built into your loan, so you're not coming out of pocket <laughs> for anything. As the homeowner, you're not coming out of pocket for anything, because a lot of times, well, you know, I always got to come up with more money for for this or for that. Everything is built on a schedule. Yeah, please. Would those in inspections take the place of a typical home, no. home inspection? No. That would be done as well? In fact, um, any responsible HUD consultant will tell you that right in front. There is, this is not a home inspection. This inspection process is to make sure that the, you have clean, well, not clean, you have running water, you know, purity tests and everything else is done by your, your local uh, supplier. Um, that the electric is on, the heat is on, there's not um, rodents running around, you don't have, again, lead paint, asbestos, mold, et cetera. You know, we're identifying living conditions. We're not telling you whether the boiler works or not, or the furnace works or not. That's the home inspection. We can, and I do it all the time, uh, doing the inspection. I said, yeah, you know, you can take down this wall, get the architect, uh, because the town's going to make you do it, because you're moving a wall. It could be structural, it could not be structural. Um, my license isn't in New Jersey. It's actually in New York because I spent most of my career working in New York uh, for, for engineering. Uh, but I can refer anyone that you need or anyone that you brought clients need. But, um, and the township permits. So this inspection process does not supersede anything. If they open up the wall, they still have to go for their electrical inspection from the town, the plumbing inspection from the town, a building inspection, fire, et cetera. That's still done through the town. My check and balance is, okay, you want to get paid? Where's that inspection sticker? I want to see it. I want to know it passed. Because sometimes the contractor doesn't need money, but the wall's already got sheetrock on it. How do I see what is up to code and what is it? So that's where the township comes in. And those permits, again, they, they're a sliding scale. 
they it, it all depends on how much work you're doing, and then they take a percentage. Um, it could be 500 or it could be 2,500. Uh, it could be 3,000, but we'll put an allowance in, and then you work within that. If it goes over, we have a contingency reserve, usually 10%. Sometimes I recommend 15. Sometimes I recommend 20. But again, it's all where the acquisition, construction costs, and how much they're approved. That's really the big thing, how much they're approved. And working within that budget. Yeah, usually the LTV will determine what contingent they'll need, either 10 or 15%. So if they have a greater LTV, then they'll leave probably use ten percent. If it's if it's shorter, they'll, leave, they'll require fifteen percent. Yeah, and and also it depends on the type of work they're doing. So if they're if they're doing a uh, a partial foundation, so let's say they they want to expand their house, they want to put a brand new foundation. You don't know what's on the ground, so sometimes they want a little bit more um, than the ten. They want the fifteen or I've been involved with some of these, some of our own agents, and people have bought foreclosed homes. So nothing was, up. they want more money, such as the 15, even 20%, if the home doesn't have uh, working electric or water. Uh, the mechanical equipment, such as the furnace or the hot water heater, may not be there. So, but again, there's, there's ways around it. There's uh, an underwriter. Who is very versed, and I'm very versed. It's, it's a huge book. It's about I don't know, 800 or something yeah. you know, of guidelines and regulations that I would then advocate if if need be for for the client when working with the underwriter and the lenders. So, well, this is one of the. I just wanted to show some people uh, some of the actual work. So, this was a foreclosed home, and. The old kitchen was just there and it had grandma's wallpaper on it and the house was just, it was shot, it really was. Uh, but this is what he turned it into. He's actually, a uh, he owns or, or helps operate a competitor of ours um, out of uh, Saddle World. But he did this interior renovation and it came out beautiful. He picked everything himself. You know, the contractor he used was able to manage what went where, and again, I just go in for the progress inspections. But working with him, because he knew business was very easy, but I just really wanted to show the transformation of what, what you can do. And I know my wife, when we were in that position, she loved it. I wanted to, I wish I didn't have to go through it, but you know, I did. And it, it really made things uh, uh, much better. And again, you're, you're creating instant equity. Uh, so these are some of the interiors. Uh, yeah, I think almost on the other side. But anyway, uh, completing an attic, basement, or adding another level. You can add a, a whole garage. You can add do an addition. You can you can really blow the walls out or the roof off, and it really gives you a lot to work with. Uh, the standards. Uh, remodeling bathrooms or kitchens, another beautiful thing, you can include appliances. I often tell people not to because PC Richards and the best buys of the world are giving interest-free financing for three years. So why would you want to pay 5% when you could pay $150 a month interest-free? You know, and so I make that recommendation. Other people say, no, we don't want to do it. It's going to affect our credit. Okay, no problem. Then you can include it in the salon. Uh, obviously, you upgrade the plumbing, heating, air conditioning, electrical wiring. And the next page is exterior, so I apologize, but you can put a fence up, you could do uh, regrading, you could build a retaining wall. Uh, but we'll go into the dogs in a minute. These are two projects, these are big brand new constructions. Uh, that I worked with. I just wanted to show some of the uh, some of the exterior work. Um, the exterior eliminate any uh, health and safety. Sometimes you have an abandoned septic tank or abandoned oil tank um, that could be part of this loan if it's not negotiated for the um, for the seller to do it. Because again, I I worked with a lot of bank owned properties and they sell as is. 
So now you're responsible. So if you're in that scenario, you can include that. Uh, again, doing a new well, septic, roof gutters, downspouts, uh, replacing the siding, painting if it's you know a shingled uh, exterior or aluminum. I still see aluminum on houses, aluminum siding, um, site what we call site improvements, fences, and expanding or building a garage. You know, adding value right to your house again if it's permitted through the town. Adding a second garage is huge to bring it up the value. So I just wanted to show you, these are two houses that are actually finished, uh, but this is the raw, obviously framing, as we call it, um, exterior homes. Uh, this one's in Rutherford, that one's in Linhurst. So you can't invest with this loan to do co-ops uh, or commercial investment properties. You can't do commercial investments. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a time that you can't even sell it. No. Uh, I believe it's two years. Yeah. Don't quote me, but I believe it's two years that because people could say they live there and flip homes like this, and you're, you're, you're literally just using the bank's money and you're flipping homes. That's, that's an investment. That's a business. This is a residential property. Now they do allow it for commercial. If you're living in one of those units, completely different, but you cannot use this for uh, commercial properties, five families on these. That's where it starts. You can't build new pools, no luxuries when it comes to stuff like that. You can, if, if there is an existing pool and it's broken or it's cracked or there's deficiencies, we can repair it because that's that's included, but building a new pool, no, I mean, we're, <clears throat> I just, um, just did a, a house yesterday and the homeowner said, well, why can't? I said, because you're only approved for hundred grand and you want to do a whole kitchen where you get 75,000 for a pool. And it, it gets very complicated, but that's a luxury. Um, it also excludes any tennis or basketball courts. Um, that's the luxury. 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 And that goes actually with barbecue pits, uh, fire pits, uh, pizza ovens, you know, exterior masonry pizza ovens, um, anything that is really a luxury. Because this is very, you know, when I go out and do inspections, I take 60 pictures, I'm going around, I send it to the bank. If it's a FHA loan, it goes to another entity after that uh, on the lender side of things. Uh, but I'm legally liable for what goes on because I have a federal license tied to this. What if the homeowner wanted to take out one of those projects but not part of the two agreement? They can do that on their own, um, own dime. They can do it on their own time. They can do it while we're in construction, but I cannot approve it for a payment. Oh, and you bring up a very good point. The homeowners cannot. Be the general contract, yeah. And not, I get it. Everyone's a DYI person, but they will not. The bank will not accept it. They won't. It's a liability. You know? It's a huge liability because you know most people think they're all experts at um, electrical and plumbing work. But what happens when the house burns down or floods? Um, and other people also try to save money that way, and they'll do some of the work. That doesn't work. Everything has to go by. That's why my report, or any of the consultant's report, is really what the driving force is for the contractor to come in. The homeowner cannot take their responsibility unless they are a home improvement contractor. Can't be an electrician, can't be an HVAC guy, has to be a home improvement. And even that, landscapers now are required to do home improvement licenses. So it, it's it's definitely a gray area. And there's a lot of there's a lot of paperwork and liability of it that general contractor takes on. I would never want the responsibility for something that I'm not the expert in. It, it, you know, you do it twice or you pay twice. And you definitely pay a lot more the second time. You mentioned that you build in or put like 10 to 15 percent like overages. Yeah. Seen it where it goes past that? Yes. I've been in construction yeah. previous to this and 
All the time. <laughs> so, so what happens in, what happens with it? Are you just out? Through the program, you're just out of money. Though. You're out of money. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. They have to, you know, homeowners financing or can't do anything. You can't refi for six months. You know, a lot of people, you know, I tell them, please go to Fluent Decor of the World, go to Pile Guy, go out, touch, feel, smell all of the products because you need to know what the cost is. Because the finishes is what are usually where people blow all of their money. Because a contractor is going to give you little allowance, and then you're going to want something that's way up here. It's you know it's nice to have nice things. I get it, but at what at what cost? Um, but yeah, we we try to manage that process. So and when you use contingency. It has to be approved before. It has to get sent to me, and then I have to then send it to the bank with all these forms and reasoning and rationale, so people just don't blow through their contingency reserve. On a hundred thousand, it's ten thousand. You could go through ten thousand without even blinking. Sure. You know, uh, you know, a couple of days just moving walls around it could be five six grand. You know, and and money goes. So I'm not your project manager. I'm here to monitor to make sure that. The contract doesn't get it over me. And you're following the guidelines of the state or of the government. But um, it does help from scamming. I can't promise that. But that's why they don't give the 30, 40% down. Work is in place. People get paid. The, home uh, the homeowner's option and selection process and, and vetting the contractors on that. But usually when you see how their bid comes in or their contract comes in, Right off the bat, you can see whether they've done these or because it goes in a special form. Because I have to put it in a special form, so they want to mimic mine. Um, Amanda, just there's, there's a question in the chat. It says, "Can you use a renovation loan as a refinance?" So yes, if you own the home, um, yeah, if you own the home and you wanted to take some of the equity out, only to put the equity back in, you can do that. That you're yeah. going to be able to see yeah. more. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of ways around it. You can do a cash out refi. Obviously, that's something different. And if you don't have enough opportunity, you don't have enough money to pull out, you can do it. You can do a rental loan on there. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. Okay. There's another question from the chat. Sorry. Uh, no, it's all right. When do they start making the mortgage payment after the construction? And what is the down payment? Three and a half percent. Um, I don't know the down payment requirement. Yeah, so the down payment requirement, it could go as low as three and a half percent. Okay. Um, and also that's for like different types of loans for if, if it's a primary residence, obviously it's three and a half, five percent. Um, what was the other? What was the other half? When do they start making the mortgage payment after so the construction? After the construction, yes. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we can include right, we can do a lot of things in the loan. You could include up to six month rent again. If, if you uh, qualify for it. So they're not living in the construction and they're just managing it within the general contractor. So that's really cool. Uh, some people don't want to do it. They just say, I want to pay for it myself. Go ahead, but you have the option of renting short-term and then moving into the house. I think that's it as far as questions. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. I'm not seeing the bubbles pop up, so I think we're good. Um, Are there any questions? Teach two night classes for, for three hours each. I can talk all day. <laughs> you know, like I know, like in just general, like construct when you're like hiring a, a contractor, you know, they say you get a couple of bids or whatever, Absolutely. you know, so it's the same sort of thing when you're looking for a contractor, 203K approved contract. There is no such thing. Oh, you said that before. Yeah, right. there is no such thing as a 203K approved contract. You see some of these contracts there, market themselves that way. 100%. Yeah. But you can get a. So my license was done out of the field, the, the HUD office down in Philly. Okay. They didn't, they could go to website and be approved, but they're not a 203K contract. Got it. I'm a 203K consultant. I have a license number that I have to put on every correspondence back to the lender and to, uh, to everyone, actually. Um, just like your real estate license number, when you put your commission form in, you got to put that in, listing information, etc. I'm tied to that number. 
Um, the contractors could go to like the National Homeowner Inspection Association. They'll give you an approval or certification. It means you took the course and you move on. Right, but it, I think what you were saying before is it's important to find a contractor who's done and yeah. worked within this type of, but because not all of them are like, I mean, you know, most yeah. of them need the money up front. Yeah. Oh, that's their, yeah. They need their money to fund their next job. Yeah. And, so you and, need somebody who's reliable. Yeah, you need, again, um, I worked with one contractor and he's great, he loves this. He's got $2 million in credit and he can do it. He can just pump these out left and right because not a, not a lot of people have that. And some of the smaller contractors, like you said, they're 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 taking this money because they're late on another job. They're paying that with for your money. That won't happen. Now, what we can do, and it is permitted, is you can get fifty percent of the material cost for very specific uh, items like cabinets. But they won't pay the homeowner or the contractor. They'll send it directly to Home Depot. Or, you know, there's a lot of direct deposit. Well, most people want to do a dual party check. So they'll cut it to Mrs. Smith and to Acme Construction. Um, you can do that. I don't like doing that, but sometimes the homeowner is just insistent on it. But also, you know, a lot of companies now, especially with logistics and, and manufacturing is, they want to deposit before they even think about cabinets, whatever it may be. So that's something to consider. And again, I don't like releasing it unless I have the permission of a homeowner before I do anything. Even when, when a contractor calls me for inspection, I ask the homeowner, this is your house. You want me to go out there yet? Does he have enough uh, work done for me to pay him? Or am I going to have that fight about how much we're doing? That happens all the time. I got no problem. So for like a, a newer agent who's never maybe done this type of program or suggested this to a buyer, I know in your your thing in the order of it to, to wait so you're under contract to get in touch with you yeah but like how does the newer agent like market themselves to, or, and pitch this to their buyers that this is a, a legit and like they're confident in the option of going this route you know what i mean like is so, there any sort of like marketing material that you have that we could you know put out there to our potential buyers or anything like that we could come up with stuff with joint marketing that we have yeah uh, the I, was down i couldn't the program was down so i couldn't even make up flyers for us today okay um but there's stuff out there that i can put the realtor's name information all that stuff on and mine or heidi's yeah um and then we can ship it out and you can show it to yeah, i'm just trying to think from like a, like a newer agent you know, yeah. perspective like how would you you know like present this to potential buyers but i think yeah. you know that's you know the point of it is to there's well inventory everywhere. Right. It sucks. You know, yeah. it's like, I hey. help, help them. Well, that's why options. That's why I'm, I'm not really, this presentation wasn't built on what the program is. Right. This is how to use the program right. yeah, yeah, yeah. to to get that, you know, that house that's falling apart, let's call it, or needs a new kitchen or needs a new bed. You're now showing them, hey, you can really elevate this and make it your own. And it's your it's your house. As long as you make the payments, Uncle Sam doesn't care. Other bank doesn't care. You know, and you're you're instantly getting that equity. So, you know, I, I if agents have questions, I'll gladly tailor something. I don't have it prepared. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we have marketing on our end that we okay. come up with yeah. all different flyers and different information along the lines that you know if you if there's something that you want to you know go towards a client of yours to persuade them into doing. To, to open up their minds with something different, we can have easily do that. Yeah, because it's almost like, you know, if you're looking at it, like if a client has to spend 450000 or 500000 on a house that still needs work, right. why not look at something that, you know what I mean? Yep. So like something that had, uh, you know, a real good A-B comparison between those situations so that they can understand it. Yeah, we have stuff along those lines. That yeah. yeah, that's, again, I... Yeah, I, I don't mean to continue. No, 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 no. Um, that's what I tried to do. Yeah, yeah. With this, yeah. I mean, listen, I I'm doing 18 homes right now. Yeah, I, yeah. I do a lot. I crank these out a lot, but I can show you. I have because I have to photograph everything, mm -hmm. and I have to do it before, and I have to do it after, and obviously during. So I can give examples of that. Look, look at what they bought. Look what it turned into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all that. I can do that, yeah. and I can I can put that together. Yeah, that's cool. Um. I'm, I'm not going to commit till next week because I'm going away for a uh, convention on um, 
uh, healthcare and education constructors. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I got divorced, but um, <laughs> sound <real> good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can email us. Yeah, and then yeah, I'll I'll give me another email lead. Out. Yeah, and I'll I'll have Amanda or yeah, lay it out to everybody. But yeah, I have those before now. Yeah, because I mean, with these type of programs, it's it's more of just an awareness issue for the buyers that yeah. are out there. So right. It's like, how do we create something that draws attention to it in, in a way that yeah? You know, makes well, that's exactly why I, I took this approach. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to give you the high level tools to use and the approach, but then you have to customize it. Every new agent's gonna have to customize it. Start looking underneath, you know, the the 90 day listings or the 100 day listings. Why are they still there? Why? Because they're probably ugly. They probably need a lot of work. But you know what? No one's bidding on them. Mm -hmm. That's where you guys come in. That's where this pitch comes in. That's where this program comes in. Is now you're able to sell that experience, like I said before. This is what you're doing. Yeah. I like that looking at like the 90 day, like, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, we got things that nobody starts, you know what I mean? But like, they could be something, they could turn they into something be, that you want. Yeah. I can, and, and I will. Uh, I could show you houses that I've done that were owned by the bank, and people were like just squatting it. Yeah. And then they turned into $12,000 a month income properties because they were um, four units. One, one person's living in there, obviously, but he's still making 12 grand. Yeah, he's me all. I have a good question. So let's say if you get pre approved for 500, right? And then you find something for 350. The rest, uh, you can use that one. Yeah, you can use that for, you can use that yeah. one for the good As long as you get pre approved. Yeah, it's like the same thing. Like, yep, it's like the same thing like a normal loan. Like if your pre approval amount is 500,000, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, so and then the house will have to appraise. Uh, we can lend up to 95% of the appraised value. So that house appraises for. 550, we can we can up to 95% of that as long as you qualify for the remaining. We have loan amounts 500. You know, a lot of people who are selling their homes um, don't want to deal with it, right? A lot of people say, oh, let's do the kitchen before we sell. We're going to increase the value. That works, but then it doesn't work because now you're taking longer to, to do the construction. You're then um, you're then managing the construction yourself as the homeowner who wants to leave. So now you, you find the homeowners that want the finer things, that want that instant equity, and you tell them or show them how, how things can do, you know, how to do this, how things can look afterwards. But yeah, 60, 90, 100 day, those bottoms, they'll go all day long. But you got to have the vision. That's where the agent comes in and each personality comes in and the sales pitch comes in. You know, listen, I understand you're looking at these homes, five, six hundred thousand, and we're getting beat out left and right. I've submitted 20 offers for you. Why don't we just go take a look at this and let me explain to you how our renovation mode works. People call me all the time. If you need help, I got no problem. Um, I'm in the chat. Um, I also, I used to do my own flips, but I never changed the company name. Um, so you can either call me, email me, my website for legitimacy purposes. I have one. Can you share that presentation? Or? Yeah, uh, we, yeah, we recorded it so I can have Amanda share. Yeah. You're talking about the, the, the actual slides to use. Yeah, the deck? Yeah, uh, I got no problem here. Just for reference, so that you know the, the things that are included, things that are excluded. And again, it, it, oh, I guarantee it will. But if you want a full, full um, list, you can Google it, and it'll be the first thing that pops up. It'll be on the HUD website, and then it'll come right up. I'm sure you probably have stuff yeah. like a mortgage yeah, on yeah, your website. Our website is like more like a buyer consultation. Mm -hmm. like you're sitting yeah. down with somebody, so you, you know, have both of them ready to go. Like, you're gonna go the traditional route, or yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like, obviously, you can figure that out in your prequal stuff, but yeah, you know, you have that option. But, but yeah, it's a great way um, to to really expand your inventory. That's out because there's nothing out there, and then and again, if it's on the if it's on the you know there could be deficiencies, but that's what this loan is for to fix those deficiencies. 
You know, a lot of people want to buy and they have this home inspection report and the home inspector says it's 50 things wrong with it. And then they go, well, I don't want to buy it. I don't have any more money. Yeah. Like, I don't have money to fix the, the hot water heater. I don't have money to put the new condenser outside. This is the option. And you could say, I'm sorry, go ahead. No. Do, you, do you have like a sample proposal that you can share so that, so that we know more or less the, the level of detail that's involved? Yeah, I mean, my reports are typically between 48 and 60 pages. I'll give you it. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> um, it's a lot. But I could give you a sample uh, proposal and a sample of my of my work that I submitted to the bank, if you like. Yeah. And I can give you a high level or I can really break down and be grinding. In your experience, how are the inspectors? Like, are they like, it depends on who you get that comes out? Is yeah. anything else? Like, yeah, it's on town. Yeah. Well, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you work with some towns, the guy like barely gets out of the car. Oh, yeah. The inspection, you know what I mean? Like, fair long, other. Yeah, fair long guys that like, I yeah. know work with my dad. They walk in and see my dad. They're like, okay, here you go. Yeah, yeah. like, look, like the, the, the framing inspector in Bergensfield. I know him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, I mean, I don't. So early in my career, uh, I worked for a company called Gilbane Building Company. They're an international company, around 12,000 employees, you know, everywhere. Uh, we were hired by the, the DCA, uh, Department of uh, Community Affairs, to manage 5,000 homes in New Jersey that were affected by Superstar Sandy. Now, I didn't manage each individual home. I was given talent. But to, to echo that, it all depends on who you get. Right now, where I work at Stevens in Hoboken uh, as the director of design and construction, I call the inspector up. He said, Mark, just take a picture. Okay, thank you. Now, you know, I, I, I sold the property. I wanted to come out 15 times, you know, yeah. and then he gave me something new all the time. And then, so it, it really it's it's, depends, yeah. yeah, it's like one of McDonald's. You could get a good burger or you could get the, the thing they throw away. It's all about the presentations. Yeah, but to your point, Bill, like we were talking about earlier, like you have a contractor that's kind of stuck together and buttoned up, it makes the whole process go easier. easier. Yeah, the minute you start nickel and diming yeah. and cheating, the inspector knows it. Yeah. Because most of the inspectors were tradesmen or they own their own company or, you know, um, does a lot of different things. But most of them were carpenters, electricians, plumbers. They're retiring, coming up that age, and they just want to, you know, work seven to three. Or work part time because most of these towns are part time. Yeah, you know? days a week. You yeah. get a small window. That's it. You get you get a limited pension. You get your you get your vacation. You get this. You got clean hours. You know. So, but just like everything else, if I showed up here with a garbage bag, no one would believe what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah. This was good. Yeah. All right. Uh, if there are any more questions, please. Contact me or Amanda. Um, I unfortunately have to go pick up my kids from school. Um, but if there's anything in particular, just let me know. Uh, and I'll work on, if you want to give me a card, I'll work on something and then yeah. I'll bounce it off you guys. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you.